Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back. We are now at chapter 23 of Ezekiel, the second part. Last time we were here, we were looking first at the faithless sisters and politics. You have two sisters. One is Oho, Oho, La. They are Oho, Liba. The elder sister was corrupt. The younger sister was even more corrupt. And they lasted after their neighbors. They should have turned to God, loved God in response to His love for them, but they were adulterous. They were faithless. And this week, as we resume, we are looking at the sisters and religion. And this is from verse 36. And let's commit this time unto the Lord. Father, indeed your word is inspired. Your word is infallible. Your word is inherent, without error. And is indeed the authoritative word of God. And upon this, Lord, we have been established. And we desire to continue in this. So, Lord, speak to us, teach us even so, as we continue to learn your word and your truth, and that we might find applications even in our walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 36, the sisters and religion. The Lord also said to me, son of man, will you judge Ohola and Oholiba? Then declare to them their abominations, for they have committed adultery and blood is on their hands. They have committed adultery with their idols and even sacrificed their sons whom they bore to me, passing them through the fire to devour them. Moreover, they have done this to me. They have defiled my sanctuary on the same day and profane my Sabbaths. For after they had slain their children for their idols, on the same day they came into my sanctuary to profane it, and indeed thus they have done it in the midst of my house. And from verse 36 to 39, it was a list of charges. Charges against Oho, La and Oholiba, what they have done against the Lord. <coughs> but what is most, what is most uh, uh, terrible is they can go and sacrifice their children. They can do the gravest sin in the day and thereafter go back into the sanctuary and hallelujah, hallelujah. You understand me now? That there is no contrite in their heart, there is no repentance, there even isn't that consciousness of sin. I mean, sometimes we fall into sin, right? Sometimes we do the wrong thing, say the wrong thing, think the wrong thing. But then the Holy Spirit will grieve us and it's like, wow, convict us and say, ah, oh, hey, shouldn't have done this, shouldn't have said this, should we, we have that, right? And then we ask, God, forgive us. I repent. But these people, they have defiled my sanctuary on the same day and profaned my Sabbath. On those Sabbath days, supposed to be holy days of rest days unto the Lord. For after they have slain their children for their idols, and they know God said, like last week you look at the chapter 22, the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. They did, right? It's wrong. And after they have slain, their children for their idols. On the same day, they came into my sanctuary. They defiled the house of God. They defiled the house of God to profane it and indeed thus they have done it in the midst of my house. <coughs> so, don't step into church on Sunday after a terrible party on Saturday and then 
maybe you are filled with a different spirit in the heart and in the young. We ought to prepare ourselves before we come into the sanctuary, whether it's a Saturday or whether it's a Sunday or whether it's Oikos or whether it's prayer meeting or any meeting where you gather with fellow saints and, and you just want to have communion with God and with men. Prepare yourself. Verse 40. Furthermore, you sent for men to come from afar to whom a messenger was sent. And there they came and you washed yourself for them, painted your eyes and adorned yourselves with ornaments. You were adulterous, like the last, the first part of this chapter 23. They were adulterous, they looked unto, they lasted unto the neighbours, the surrounding nations. Wow, before they come, before they come, wow, cosmetics, Botox, uh, patch up, makeup, everything, prepare yourself, dress yourself, and wait for them. And I think sometimes uh, we dress, really dress ourselves up for other occasions. Uh. But when we come to church, I see people come in slippers, shorts, singlet, really shabby. And, and the one thing I learned from my good teacher, great teacher, David Pawson, I attended his class a few years back. And he was dressed in his three-piece suit and everything. And people ask, why do you dress this way? Because now it's contemporary, you understand? Now it's, you know, is it I dress not for you, I dress for the Lord. And I want to be in my best for Him. What else is there to say? Right? So even as you dress for your social occasions, dress for the Lord, be decent, be modest. Now I'm not asking you to go down Orchard Road and buy Katie's paint and buy all the Chanel and all this. No, 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 no. Just dress modestly, dress well, dress decently. So when you come in your slippers and your shorts and, and this and that and flip flops and, and whatever, I think it's not so appropriate. My opinion, we all come from a different generation, right? So. <laughs> Jason, dress as you are. <laughs> okay, so verse 41. You sat on a stately couch with a table prepared before it, on which you had sat my incense and my oil, the sound of a carefree multitude was with her. You see, it is one step in the world and one step in the church. It's trying to be both. While you dress up for your neighbours to come, late neighbours whom you lust after. But meanwhile, you want to look a bit holy, a bit spiritual. So you sat on a stately couch with the table prepared before it, on which you have set my incense and my oil. So you come to church, you carry a Bible and look as if, wow, I'm holy. Yeah? I have my oil, my incense thing, that the, the thing that I burn unto the Lord as a form of worship, and oil, oil anointing. anointing. Yeah? So if I put some bow cream here, I look quite holy, right? shiny. Right? So it's not the outside, it is the inside. The sound of a carefree multitude was with her. So, are we to be carefree? No. We are to be God-centered. Not, tida apa, don't worry, doesn't matter. Whatever will be, will be. The sound of a carefree multitude was with her. And Sabians were brought from the wilderness and men of the common sort. Now, who are the Sabians? The Sabians are from the south. They are from Arabia. But what else do we know about them? The Sabians are known to be drunkards. Drunkards. They, they, they love fermented barley juice, you know. They, they just get themselves drunk. And this people of Israel, they were so desperate and they were so uh, deep in their sin. It doesn't matter. Even drunkards, uh, they also invite them and welcome them to the party. So the drunkards say, hey, got free food, got free drink, got good time. Go! And saviors were brought from the wilderness, the Arabian desert, with men of the common salt, who put bracelets on their 
wreaths and beautiful crowns on their heads. Then I said concerning her, who had grown old in adulteries. Means people who had probably spent their whole life in, in adulteries relationship. Will they commit harlotry with her now? And she with them. Yet they went in to her as men go in to a woman who plays the harlot. And thus they went in to Ohola and Oholiba, the Liu women. See how God describes his own people, the Liu women. They have gone to their state. And this is just though it, it is just like a parable and so on. But it speaks of the spiritual state of the people of Israel. They were adulterous. But righteous men will judge them after the manner of adulteresses and after the manner of women who shed blood because they are adulteresses and blood is on their hands. Verse 6, 46, For thus says the Lord God, Bring up an assembly against them. Give them up to trouble and plunder. Gather the righteous people. Let the people judge. That's what it means. Gather the assembly against these people, these sisters. Give them up to trouble and plunder. The assembly shall stone them with stones and execute them with their swords. Do you know adultery will demand execution, death penalty. It's in the law. They know. And so, this will be dished out to them. They shall slay their sons and their daughters and burn their houses with fire. Then I will cause lewdness to cease from the land and all women may be taught not to practice their lewdness. So this judgment here, this punishment has twofold. Number one, number one, it is to seize the rod, to stop the rod, to stop the lewdness. You understand? So you say, wow, kill, kill the children, the sons and the daughters and so on. But this is talking about the nation, talking about Judah, talking about the northern kingdom, Israel. So in order to kill this decay, you must kill the cancer, the root of the problem. So they will be stopped. So the judgment is to stop the rot, number one. Number two, it is to warn the, the others so that the others who are watching, they learn that they shall not follow in the same path as Ohola and Oho Liba. You follow me? That is judgment. So that the women may be taught not to practice their lewdness. They shall repay you for your lewdness and you shall pay for your idolatrous sins, then you shall know that I am the Lord God, that I am the righteous God. And because He is a God of righteousness, He must judge and He must punish sin. And then the people realize, indeed, indeed, this is the sovereign God, this is the great Jehovah that they ought to fear and revere and obey. And that is chapter 23.